I remember sitting in a training session as a guy was talking about financial investments of some sort and trading on the stock market and all kinds of other stuff. He was kind of all over the board in ways to generate wealth. But he didn't get to the place of talking about that until he told his life story. And then he put up a picture on the screen of his children and it was kind of a collage. It was his children. It was his spouse. It was his ranch in the West Virginia mountains. And it was his car. And after he left it on the screen for a minute, I guess for all of us to admire, he turns around with a tear in his eye. I'm not sure how real it was. And he said, this, this is my why. This is my why. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. There are a lot of different people who will tell you, start with why. Why do you do what you do is a very important question. I believe it may be among the most important questions because why you do what you do is the question of motivation. How do you motivate yourself to get out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning or whatever time it is you get up? What motivates you to get up? Is it the fact that you fear your lights are going to be turned off if you don't show up for work and get your paycheck? Well, of course that's motivation, but that motivation will only drive you to, well, get out of bed to get your paycheck so that you can keep your lights on. Will that motivation drive you to the next level? Will it cause you to do anything you're not doing at this point? So back to my story. He talked about all of the nice things that he had and the important people in his life, and all of those were incredible, and, and I get it. But I want to ask this honest question. I wonder how many people sitting in the room saw his nice car and his new pickup truck and his large amount of land in the West Virginia mountains and thought to themselves, I want to have what he has. I want to have what he has. I like that truck. I like that car. I like that land. I like that house and I like that wife. See, if all of those things are true, then are you being motivated by what someone else has? Because I believe that's a bad thing if you're motivated, motivated by someone else's possessions. But then if what you're really motivated by is just the idea of having your own nice car and your own nice house and your own nice pickup truck and your own nice land, and presumably within that relationship with a nice spouse, a few nice kids, if that's what drives you, what happens when, A, you get it all? You've made enough money now, you bought the house, you bought the land, you bought the vehicles, you, you have the spouse, you have your kids, now what? What motivates you now? What's the why behind your getting out of bed? Why do you get up and continue to do it if you've already achieved those things? If those are your goal, if that's your why, you're done, right? Or what if you achieve all those things and then lose them? There was a, a young girl on the news in, in North Carolina. They'd been saving up and scrimping and eating macaroni and cheese and macaroni and cheese and macaroni and cheese for months so that her husband could put a down payment on a house. And for the first time, they were moving from 700 square feet to 2,700 feet. She was so excited. But as they interviewed her on the news, she pointed over her shoulder and she said, that's my house. And the water was up to the windows. Now, she had fortunately purchased flood insurance when she bought the house, even though her house wasn't in a flood zone. And so there may be some grace at the end of the day for her. But what if you strive all of your life, all of your career for that measure of success that becomes your why, your motivation to have that house, to have that car, to have that spouse. And now that you have it, a natural disaster takes it away. Do you lose your motivation? Has your why changed? What's driving you now? Let me offer an alternative. What if your why was about the transformation of other people's lives? 
see, there's a beauty in that and a challenge at the same time. And that is that if you know what it is that you offer to others by way of transformation, what you're capable of delivering to them to change their life. You will find that there's not just one person who would benefit from that transformation. There are dozens, maybe hundreds, perhaps thousands or even millions. Which means, if that's what motivates you and you do it well, you'll never run out of motivation. There will always be someone in need of the transformation that you offer. See, there's a difference between wanting those things, those markers of success and wanting to provide hope and transformation for others. Wanting things as markers of success, that's called ambition. And when you reach your goals, you have to set new goals or you have to start all over. And if you lose those things that you've attained, you may lose your motivation. On the other hand, serving people for the purpose of transformation, that why is called purpose. And so long as there are people you will have purpose. What is your why? Lead with your why. Lead yourself and lead others with the motivation that looks like, how do I serve the people around me and make their lives better? I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.